hello students welcome to pharma syndrome youtube channel so as we already discussed the part 1 receptor pharmacology that is a detailed discussion on the ion channel receptors and after that uh, we are continuing our discussion on part 2 receptor pharmacology that is second type of receptors in the classification g protein coupled receptors so as you know g protein coupled receptors are having 60 to 70% distribution in the body 60 to 70% distribution of receptors in the body belongs to the g protein coupled receptors that's why the number of body activities are interrelated with the g protein coupled receptors so here the second type is g protein coupled receptors and here what is g protein means simply the g protein is a one ion nucleotide binding protein here receptor is interacting with the g protein then what is g protein so directly in the competitive exams many times they asked what is g protein it is simply a guanine and nucleotide binding protein involving in the pharmacological actions by g protein coupled receptors so there are different types of synonyms are for g protein coupled receptors the first one is seven transmembrane heptahelical receptor so it containing a seven heptahelical receptor so next slide in the diagram i will show clearly and next these are also called as serpentine receptors these are also called as intercellular receptors so inter means between the two cells so even ion channel receptors are also called as intercellular so ion channel receptors g protein coupled receptors ngm linked receptors these three are called as intercellular receptors nuclear receptors are called as intracellular nuclear receptors location is within the cell and apart from that these receptors are also called as metabotropic receptors so mostly body metabolic activities under control of g protein coupled receptors that's why the g protein coupled receptors are also known as the metabotropic receptors so this is regarding a synonyms of the g protein coupled receptors and next just a minute and next regarding its description the g protein coupled receptors shows action within the milliseconds the g protein coupled receptor shows action within the seconds to minutes not milliseconds sorry so here generally most of the test books they mention as a seconds but some test books they mention also seconds to minutes so this seconds means is depend on the type of tissue and the type of response required by the body nothing but based on the body condition and body requirement so regarding ion channels it is milliseconds so here as we all as i already told you these receptors are called as transmembrane intracellular they present in between the cells and their transmembrane they present throughout the cell they present into the cell through the cells so these are also called as seven transmembrane heptahelical so these are the seven loops so seven means seven loops if you observe clearly 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven transmembrane heptahelical receptors and this structure is looking like a snake the folds are looking like snake that's why these are also called as serpentine receptors like ravolvia in the pharmacognosy the roots are like a snake roots looking like a snake like here also these receptors are serpentine receptors and especially so what are this g alpha gamma beta so i will explain here so for example in the body receptors always inactive in nature any substance in the body they are inactive in nature when ligand molecule is bind like ego nest when ligand molecule is bind there is a, some changes will start for example when you switch on the much but when you are in position of switch on the light or fan will be in the work so like here when ego nest will bind there is a, some changes will occur in the within the receptors within the receptor some changes will occur so initially maybe you can assume it as a ligand binds here this is a ligand binding site when ligand binding to the g protein couple receptors what will happen there will be some changes but before here if you observe this is a before like g alpha and gamma as well as beta subunits and here cofactor is gdp guanosine diphosphate so this is in inactive position when ligand molecule bind when agonist bind when agonist interact with the receptor especially here g protein couple receptors what changes are happening if you observe 
the G alpha is separate as well as beta gamma units also becoming separated, especially this reaction. So here conversion of inactive proteins to the nothing but inactive G proteins to the active G proteins. There is involvement of phosphate group. There is addition of phosphate group. That's why if you observe initially here, it is a GDP by addition of a again one phosphate molecule, it is converts into the GTP. So here the G protein couple receptors are become activated. That is G alpha unit is separated, which is linked with the GTP and beta gamma units are separated. Here G alpha is responsible for the biological action and beta gamma units are called as molecular chaperons. They are act, they work as a controlling units of G alpha. If G alpha activity is more, that come to the low level, if G alpha activity is less, it goes to the higher levels. That is depend on the beta gamma units. That is beta gamma units are working as a molecular chaperons. They are control units of the G alpha activity. So this is simply conversion of inactive receptors to the active receptors. So the G proteins are becoming active. The units are like G alpha is linked with GTP and beta gamma units are separated. Next, just a minute. And next, so when G protein couple receptors are active, so inactive G protein couple receptors converted into the active G protein couple receptors. So what is happening here? So if you observe, again, you can assume here, Again, you can assume here. So this is a G protein couple receptor that is seven transmembrane heptahelical. So this is a amine subunit and this is a carboxylic acid domain because receptors are proteins. Proteins are nothing but amine acids. Amine acids are nothing but carboxylic acids. So this is the amine domain. This is a COH domain. The amine domain present out of the cell, the COH domain present within the cell. So when the agonist molecule is binds to the receptors, what is happening? So already there is a conversion of G alpha, sorry, alpha GTP subunit responsible for the action and beta gamma subunits are responsible as a molecular chaperons regulate the alpha GTP domain action. So especially inactive G proteins are converted into active G proteins. So when this G alpha ET, alpha GTP is produced, there is a production of four active G proteins. The four active G proteins like uh, G alpha S, G alpha IR naught, G alpha Q, and G alpha 12 by 13. G alpha 12 by 13. So these are the four active G proteins involving the different actions. So first uh, G alpha S. When G alpha S means you can assume it as a S means stimulation. When G alpha S, there is a stimulation of active G proteins. There is an increased adenyl cyclase. AC means adenyl cyclase increased cyclic adenosine monophosphate levels, increased calcium levels, and decreased potassium levels. So this is regarding the G alpha S. Yes. When G alpha IR not means, assume it as a I means inhibition, opposite to the stimulation. G alpha IR not is opposite to the G alpha S. Yes. That is decreased adenyl cyclase action, decreased cyclic adenosine monophosphate action, decreased calcium concentration, as well as increased potassium concentration. So there is an unintentional mistake that is increased potassium concentration. Next G alpha Q. G alpha Q is also one of the active G protein. What is happening here? Increased DAG that is diacylglycerol, increased IP3, ionocetal triphosphate and increased calcium levels. This is regarding G alpha Q. And here G alpha 12 by 13. G alpha 12 by 13 means exchange of sodium R exchange of sodium or potassium or calcium with the proton. So this is an exchange. So sometimes entry of a glucose from outside of the cell to inside, it requires exchange of ions. So like particular activities, this G alpha 12 by 13 is involved, especially the requirement of this exchange mechanism is important at the kidney, exchange of ions for the diuresis purpose, elimination of the urine purpose. So this is regarding the inactive G proteins to active G protein convert, conversion and how many types of G proteins are there here like G alpha S, G alpha IR naught, G alpha Q, 
g alpha 12 by 13 and next we are moving to the next one that is So here, this is a signal transduction. Just a minute. So signal transduction. So what is signal transduction? Signal transduction is like a switch on or switch off mechanism. So simply when you putting the position of switch on on position, the light as well as fan is working. When you on the switch off position, the light as well as fan is not working. For example, I am saying. So like that here also, when ligand molecule is interacting with the receptor, based on the ligand interaction, there is a generation of action or there is a no generation of pharmacological action. That is, that is decided by the signal transduction. So when ligand molecule is binding to the receptor, there is some transduction, some signal is passing into the cell. Like that, when you putting your finger on the switch, maybe on or off because of that uh, there is a, some signal is generating in the electrical mode because of that the fan may be work the fan may be not work so that signal transduction which is generating within the cell is generally called as signal transduction so regarding the g protein couple receptors there are two signal transduction pathways the first one is cyclic kmp or adenyl cyclase cyclic adenosine monophosphate or adenyl cyclase pathway so this cyclic KMP is generally called as secondary messenger. Always secondary messengers are very, very essential for the pharmacological action. This secondary messengers decides the pharmacological action. So, so then what is the first messenger? First messenger is a ligand molecule. So binding of a ligand, the ligand is first messenger. And after that, because of this first messenger interaction, within the receptor, some actions will be generated. That is signal transaction. Because of the signal transaction, there is a generation of messengers called as secondary messengers. These secondary messengers like cyclic adenosine monophosphate decides the pharmacological action. So here, how this cyclic KMP is generated? So the cyclic KMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate is generated by ATP to ADP, ADP to AMP, that AMP undergoes cyclization. So I didn't mention here un unintentionally. So adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate, adenosine diphosphate to adenosine monophosphate, adenosine monophosphate upon reaction with the cyclization converted into the cyclic adenosine monophosphate. And uh, this uh, production of cyclic KMP is promoted by the adenine cyclase enzyme. Production of cyclic KMP is counteracted, negative feedbackly controlled by the Phosphodiesterase enzyme PDE. So PDE reduces the cyclic KMP generation, nothing but inhibit the cyclic KMP generation, and adenine cyclase promote the cyclic KMP generation. So simply remember, adenine cyclase increase the cyclic KMP generation. Phosphodiesterase enzyme inhibits or reduces the cyclic KMP generation. Please remember this phosphodiesterase enzyme. In many topics, this phosphodiesterase enzyme will comes. So here I already told you. This cyclic KMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate is a secondary messenger. It having number of pharmacological action. So the, again, I repeating, the cyclic KMP is important. Secondary messengers are important for the pharmacological action. So here, the same cyclic KMP on heart contraction, the same cyclic KMP on lungs relaxation, the same cyclic KMP on the liver glycogenolysis, break down the glycogen into the glucose. The same cyclic KMP on the blood vessel, dilation, that is dilation of the blood vessel. And uh, the same cyclic KMP on the platelets, inhibit the platelet aggregation. If the secondary messenger is the same, but the tissues are changing and response also changing. That's why generation of a secondary messenger through the signal transduction is very, very important in the receptor pharmacology, especially G protein coupled receptor pharmacology. Next. Here, there are number of examples are there. Like, a, so there are number of examples in the G protein coupled receptors. So the examples like uh, adrenergic receptors. So adrenergic receptors, that is sympathetic adrenergic, serotonergic, serotonergic receptors, 
the ligand is the serotonin cannabinoid receptors like two types of cannabinoid receptors are there the ligand is cannabis muscarinic receptors the ligand is acetylcholine histaminergic receptors the ligand is histamine opioid receptors the ligands are opioids like morphine codeine heroin dopaminergic receptors the ligand is dopamine metabotropic glutamate receptors the ligand is glutamate gaba b receptors gaba a and c ion channel gaba b is g protein couple receptors and metabotropic glutamate in the ion channels also ionotropic glutamate as there in metabotropic also nothing but g protein metabotropic glutamate that's why to differentiate easily the glutamate under the g protein are called as metabotropic glutamate receptors in case of ion channel ionotropic glutamate receptors okay under just a minute okay so here after signal transduction of a cyclic kmpr adenyl cyclase pathway next signal transduction second signal transduction in the g protein coupled receptors is in the g protein coupled receptors is that is ip3 dag inositol triphosphate as well as diacylglycerol pathway the precursor is phosphotidyl inositol diphosphate phosphotidyl t i d y l phosphotidyl inositol diphosphate so this phosphotidyl inositol diphosphate in presence of enzyme phospholipase c in presence of enzyme phospholipase c break down into inositol triphosphate ip3 and diacylglycerol dag so the ip3 is directly interact with the endoplasmic reticulum and increase the release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum apart from that uh, the diacylglycerol also involving in number of phosphorylation reactions and it is also increase the calcium level so both simply the ip3 as well as dag pathway inositol triphosphate as well as diacylglycerol both are the secondary messengers here and these are increasing the calcium levels as you know calcium is always having the excitation actions the calcium is always having the excitation action so simply in case of uh, above signal transduction there is involvement of cyclic kmp as a secondary messenger but here calcium is a secondary messenger calcium is the secondary messenger here so so what are the actions of calcium the actions of calcium if you observe on the glands it causes excitation of glands increase the release of hormones on the cns it causes excitation and it causes cns stimulation on the smooth muscle it causes excitation and it causes smooth muscle contraction on the skeletal muscle it causes skeletal muscle contraction so these are the two signal transduction pathways in the g protein couple receptors essential for the pharmacological action so i already told you 60 to 70% of receptors in the body under the g protein couple receptors okay this is regarding the g protein couple receptors so this is receptors part 2 so please go through the receptor part 3 in our channel thank you